Hey guys, and welcome to my first YouTube video. This is going to go on my YouTube channel where I'll be talking about movies, video games, TV shows, and comics. Basically anything entertainment. My true passion. I'm really excited to start this up. I hope you guys leave a comment below, like my video, and subscribe. So we're going to start off the channel by doing a review, and we're going to be reviewing Mad Max Fury Road on Blu-ray. This movie is strange, ludicrous, and exciting. This film was directed by George Miller, and George Miller's directed the previous three Mad Max. It's kind of interesting because George Miller has directed these beautifully graphic, violent, artistic movies, but he's also directed those family films such as Babe and Happy Feet. I want to start by saying that you do not need to see any of the three previous Mad Max films to enjoy this movie. My wife and I sat down to watch this. I've seen the first Mad Max and part of Road Warrior, and she's not seen any of the Mad Maxes, and we both thoroughly enjoyed this movie from beginning to end. It was a self-contained story. They do throw some easter eggs in there for you though if you have seen the previous film, such as the music box from Thunderdome, Tom Hardy wears the original Mad Max, that Mel Gibson wore jacket. This film stars Tom Hardy, who you may know from The Dark Knight Rises as Bane. Oh, you think darkness is your ally? Th th this was my Bane mask. The movie also stars Charlize Theron, who was made famous from her Oscar winning role in Monster. And we have Nicholas Holtz as Nux, who you may know as Beast from the recent X-Men movies. So I'll start with the plot. The plot's pretty basic. You have the first half of the movie is a car chase. The second half of the movie is a car race. That's about it. And to be honest, I'm okay with that because I was thoroughly involved and entranced in this movie, and that's more than I can say for any movie that I've seen in the past three months. A lot of the credit can go to the actors who did this quite well. As I said, Tom Hardy is Mad Max. I believe Max had about 10 lines throughout this entire movie, but due to Tom Hardy's excellent acting where he can convey emotions through his facial expressions and his body language is just fantastic. You really feel what he's feeling. Then we have Furiosa, who this is her story. Even though Mad Max is on the title of this movie and he's the title character, this is Furiosa's story. She packs the emotional punch throughout this entire film. She really carries the story. Max is a supporting character in his own movie, and to be honest, I'm okay with that because Charlie Theron really delved into the psyche of what it is to be in a post-apocalyptic world, and what she does to survive, and what she does for... You can tell Nicholas Holt had a lot of fun with this character throughout the filming. He plays a war boy of the warlord and Morton Joe, and basically they're kamikaze pilots in these cars. He wants to sacrifice himself. He wants to die with glory on the battlefield of the Fury Road. And then we have this warlord in Morton Joe, who's a, the leader of the war boys, and he owns basically this property that has the only water left in the world, and he works together with this gasoline town. Fun fact, Morton Joe is actually played by the actor who played the original antagonist in the first Mad Max, Toe Cutter, over 30 years ago. They actually do a really good job of making Morton Joe intimidating. They show him in this mask that's kind of a mix between Bane and a horse mouth. They have these huge horse teeth that look like it's eroding, and it's strapped up to his breathing apparatus. And he actually has this deep, echoing voice that's very, very daunting. It's, it's, it's haunting, this world they set up with it, and it's awesome. And then they have these five wives. These five wives are basically the warlord's property, and they're there to make babies for the warlord. Charlie Theron's Furiosa is badass. I can see now why so many people have dressed up as Furiosa for cosplays, because she is a great empowerment to women. She doesn't bow down to anyone, and she does what she needs to do to survive. This is exactly what men have been doing in roles for the longest time since the 80s action movies, and even before that. But she does it in such a way that I'm convinced that she was made for that role. I cannot praise George Miller enough for the direction he gave this movie. The stunts are brilliant. 80% of the stunts in this movie were actually practical, and you can really appreciate the movie so much more because of that. He's able to get away with so many wide shots and seeing all these actions coming together at one point that it's fantastic, and he's able to do this because of the practicality. Seeing a real car crash versus a CGI car crash is a world's difference. I know we've kind of gotten used to this age of where we just see um, explosions here and there and we can put it together with CGI, but when you actually get to see an actual car flip and blow up, it's really quite a difference. This is how action was supposed to be shot. None of this shaky cam. I understand the point of the shaky cam, but it is being abused by directors these days. I don't want to go to a movie and get motion sickness. George Miller strays away from this in all the right ways. There is maybe one bad CGI shot in this movie, and the reason that it may stick out is because all the other stunts are so practical. It maybe took me out of the movie for about 10 seconds, but after those 10 seconds, I was right back in the movie because another great practical stunt happened. One part of the movie that I had a lot of fun with was a fight that was between Furiosa, Nux, and Max, and actually all the five wives, and it was kind of cool to see because they were all 
tangled or they were connected in one way and the way they had to move throughout this fight being one unit was great. It was really fun to see. I mean this is a movie about vehicle stunts and vehicle action but the hand-to-hand -hand combat was nothing to scoff at either. This movie actually has a lot of special features and on the Blu-ray it doesn't say that on the back it just says get in depth into the world of Mad Max but it really doesn't do it justice. There are over two hours of special features in this Blu-ray and they're awesome. They really make me appreciate the movie that much more. They also have a special feature about the cars. They talk about how they stylized the cars, what type of engines the car had, why they designed it this specific way, and it's really cool because the cars are in the way a character of this movie just as much. The special features also has a 30 minute documentary where they talk with the cast, crew, director, everyone about their experiences on the film, and it was really great to watch that and then watch the film again and just have more appreciation for everyone. I highly recommend that you see this movie. You can rent it on Amazon Prime, you can get it on Blu-ray or DVD. It's also back out on IMAX to see in the theaters as well, and it'll be on Redbox in three weeks. Even if you don't love action movies, you will find something to love in this movie, whether it's seeing how beautiful the colors are, seeing the practicality of the stunts, or just seeing great actors portray emotions through more than just dialogue. I know this is my first review and I probably shouldn't do this, but I'm giving Mad Max an A+. This movie is beautiful, it is enthralling, it is high octane action at its finest, and everyone in this film was at the top of their game. It is a true treat to watch. Alright guys, so that was my first video. I really appreciate you watching. Please make sure to like and subscribe. I really mean a lot to me. And also comment down below because I want to hear what you guys thought about the movie. If you've seen it or if you haven't seen it and now you plan on seeing it, please just respond. It'll be a great time. I'm going to be posting more reviews and more opinions about stuff soon.